Microsoft OneDrive is one of those programs that can be extremely useful to your day to day, but a lot of people don't know how to use it effectively. So in today's video, I want to give you a rundown of exactly how you can use OneDrive. Uh, in front of me, we've got a list of a lot of the things I'm going to cover from the basics of adding a OneDrive account to creating and sharing file links and going through things like settings and permissions. I am going to chapter these, so you can feel free to jump to whatever is relevant to you. Uh, of course, if you do find this video useful, let me know by giving a thumbs up and if you're in a supercharged way as your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. With that being said, let's get into this. So the first thing is, well, hey, how do I access OneDrive? If you have a work computer, OneDrive should already be pre-installed on your file explorer. Your file explorer is basically all your files. And on the left-hand side, you'd have your little icon here that says your name and your company name as well. But just in case you don't have it, in the bottom right hand corner of your Windows 10 or your Windows 11 PC, you should have a little cloud symbol and this says OneDrive. If you open this guy up, in the top right hand corner you have your little settings here and we can open this guy up here again and select on settings. This is going to take us to this dialog box where you can go ahead and press the button of add an account. You can also do things like choose which folders you want synced to your OneDrive uh, as well as add a personal account if your organization allows you to do it. You can check things like your syncing and your backup here as well. You can pause syncing when it's on battery saver, all that sort of stuff. But the main thing here is if you don't have your OneDrive account connected to your computer right now, select on the OneDrive symbol in your taskbar, go into the settings cog and settings, and then go ahead and add your account and then it'll start to load. If you ever have issues with OneDrive, uh, you will notice that the logo down the bottom will have some sort of symbol on it. Mine has the processing a change option because it tells me it's working on something right now. Uh, and then once everything is good, it will say your files are synced. If it is syncing things online or down to your PC, it will also tell you that in this section here as well. Cool. So let's move on and open up our file explorer because we have OneDrive that is installed and it is working, but it still can be confusing. One thing to know with OneDrive is that it accesses all of your cloud documents or your personal uh, OneDrive files. And it looks like they're all on your computer but that's where these status symbols are really important. There are three symbols that you do need to know. The first one is this cloud symbol. And if you have a cloud, that means this file, it lives online, but as soon as you open it up, you're gonna get this light green tick. And that means it's gonna cache or it's gonna store on your computer for a certain period of time, usually around 30 days. That means you can access this file, but it's only there temporarily. And the reason it's opened up or it's gone to a green tick is because we've opened up this file in Excel and it says, hey, I'm opened up. So I'm no longer just on, online. I'm also locally on this device as well. After you're done using that file, it will push it back online and that will save some storage on your PC because you don't want your hard drive to fill up with files that you don't use all the time. But of course, there are times where you don't have access to the internet. For those times, you, this green tick and these blue clouds don't really do much for you. What you want to do, if you have a file that you want to keep on your computer all the time, you want to right click on that file, go down to where it says always keep on this device. And then you'll see that green tick is going to go from light green to solid green. And that means it's going to save it locally on your hard drive as well. Any changes that you make on this file will happen as soon as you're connected to the internet. So your online version updates as well. But when you have this solid green tick, it means even if you have no internet, you can still access that file. That's really important for if you're traveling around and you're not connected to Wi-Fi, you could be on a plane, making sure you right click on all the files that are important to you and you always keep on this device means you can access them even if you don't have Wi-Fi. You might be wondering though, well, what happens to the file that's online? The file that's online will resync to your version as soon as your computer backs up and connects to the internet again. So you could go through, make some changes while you're off offline, and then as soon as you're connected to the internet, it'll just update the version online as well, and then everything is up to date. If you've got a whole bunch of files on your OneDrive that you've just you've saved and everything is backed up to your computer and you're running out of space, you can right click on any of these files and select on the option of free up space. So maybe we're done using this file, we just go free up space, and it'll say, hey, I'm gonna throw it back online. You get a syncing symbol for a couple of seconds, depending on how big the file is, and then that cloud pops back up saying, this file's still available. If you double click on it, it's gonna open up. 
it will go into that light green tick. It'll open up in Word or whatever program it is. Uh, but it will, once you're finally done with it, it'll sync back online, saving storage on your computer. There is another little symbol here that we can see next to some of these files, and that is a little person symbol. This symbol means that this file, even though it's yours and it's saved in your personal or your work OneDrive, it means that it's shared with people as well. This is great for online collaboration, especially when you're working in rem with remote teams or working in different areas, or you just wanna share some files with people. The little person symbol here lets you know that you have files that are shared with people outside of just yourself. So what I'm gonna teach you now is how you can share a file, and there's a couple of different ways to do it. The first way I'm gonna teach you how to share a file is through OneDrive. So we're in OneDrive, and say for example, this new product presentation, nope, that's already got one. I'm gonna select on the new product pricing. I'm gonna right click on this file, and then I'm gonna go down to where it says OneDrive, and then you can see here, I've got a few options of share, copy link, manage access, view online and version history. These are all really important, but what we want right now is the share option. So if I open up share, this dialog box is gonna pop up and it's gonna ask me to start adding in some people in my organization that I wanna share this file with. So I could add a name of someone, a group or an email address. I'm just gonna add in Deborah and I'm gonna add in Patty. So when I hit the send button, Deborah and Patty are gonna have access to this file, but don't hit send just yet. On the right hand side, you can see there's a little pencil icon and it says can edit. By default, a lot of organizations have it set to can view and you have to manually change it from can view to can edit. If you send this to someone and they've only got the can view option turned on, they can view the file, but they can't actually make any changes. Sometimes that's important, but a lot of the time you don't want to edit and collaborate. So if you want to edit and collaborate with somebody else, put their details in here, drop down on this option and choose can edit. There also is a third option of can, uh, can view, but not download. You can choose this if you need to, but for most people can edit is what you want. And now there's a few different ways that we can share this to Debbie and or Deborah and Patty. The first one is by adding a message. So I've just added a message saying, hi team, please update the new product pricing. And if I hit the button send, this is gonna give them an email invitation to that file. But if I hit the option of copy link, that means I can copy that link and paste it across. I can give it to Debbie, Deborah, Patty, or anybody with that link, and they can edit it. And then there's also the settings cog here as well. But now I'm just gonna hit send and send it as an email invite just to Deborah and to Patty. So it tells me that I've invited two people to edit the new product pricing PowerPoint so I can get out of that. And what we see here is under the status section, new product pricing, there is now that little people icon on here. We've shared it to Deborah and Patty. But if I right click on it and go over to the OneDrive option one more time and select share, we're gonna open up that dialog box one more time. So here in the bottom left-hand corner, it's gonna show me the three people that have access to this file. And this is really important because maybe you want to see who has access and actually change their access from can edit to can view. Maybe we want Deborah to e edit it, but Patty, we're gonna go change and we're gonna give her view only access and hit apply. If we go back, we can see I'm the owner, Deborah can edit it and Patty can view it. And it's no longer in any groups or in any links. We haven't shared it around. If you wanted to stop this, sharing this file completely, you can select on the stop sharing button here and this will break everybody's access to the file and only you will have access to it again. But I'm gonna press back one more time because another feature I use quite a bit is the copy link option. Because sometimes I don't wanna email people the link, I wanna share it to them through a Teams chat. And this is where copy link is really important. So I'm gonna go X out of this and walk you through it from the start. I'll right click on new product pricing, go over to OneDrive and go share. Then I'm gonna select on the option of copy link, or I can select on the link settings. Here I can actually have a few options to, to lock this down. Right now it's by default set to anyone can share and it doesn't require sign in. That for a lot of organizations is usually grayed out. You usually have people within your organization and it says people in your company need a company account required. So this means anyone in your company will have access to the link or you could go people with existing access, which would be Debbie and Patty. 
or you can go people you choose and you can add more people in. I think the most common one to use is people in Contoso with the option of can edit or people in Contoso is the name of this company. So it would say people in your company. We go can edit, then we simply select on apply. This is gonna generate a link that we can go copy. It's gonna say we have copied that link. People in your company with this link can edit. Then we can jump over to Microsoft Teams and maybe we wanna give Megan access to this link. So we can say, hi Megan, here's the pricing. Paste in that link. And then you'll see Megan will have access to editing this, uh, this product as well as soon as we hit send. But again, before I hit send, I do wanna point your eyes to something that down here it says people in your organization with this link can edit. If for whatever reason you wanted to adjust that link before you hit send, you can drop this menu down and then you can go ahead and you can actually say people in the current chat with existing access, all that sort of stuff. And you can say can edit, can view or can't download. For now we'll keep it to can edit, we'll go apply and then we we'll hit send. And now Megan also has access to that product and she can start writing and collaborating with us. So it's really easy once you start to understand the fundamentals and the basics. But the main thing is you right click on it, you go over to the OneDrive option and you have the main options here where you can create that sharing link. You can copy the link if you know it's already created. You can manage access and then you can also view it online or even view the version history. Version history is really important because sometimes people make edits and well, you don't always want them to make that edit or they make the wrong edit. If you open up version history, this is gonna show you who's made all the different changes here. In this example, only one person has, but if we had 10 different people editing at 10 different times, we would have 10 different versions here that we could select on the options, view it online and restore it if we needed to. One of the most common ways that people share files is using Outlook, which is great, but they often attach the file instead of attaching the link. When you attach a file to Outlook, you're creating duplicates of it, and then you often end up with so many different versions of the uh, same file. I'm gonna pretend it's a brand new day, so we no longer have that link that we copied, and we've just opened email up for the first time. We're gonna send a message over to Grady, and we're gonna invite him to a document. So there's two ways that we can do this through Outlook. The first way is going over to our file explorer, going into OneDrive, right-clicking on the product, going OneDrive, copy link, getting that link, and then pasting it in, which is cool. But there's another even easier way to do this. In one in Outlook here, we can actually select on the insert option or even in the message tab, there's a button here that says attach file. If we drop this down, this is gonna look at all our most recent documents that we've accessed in our OneDrive. So you can see here we have our purchasing things, our videos, all that sort of stuff. And we can go ahead and attach these files. And it's gonna ask us, do we wanna attach it as a copy? If we do, everyone gets a separate copy of that file. But if we create a share link, it says recipients can see the latest changes and respond in real time. Creating a shared link allows people to edit documents together and it doesn't create duplicates. So if we go create a shared link, this is gonna put the document in here and you can see recipients can edit. So this means that we can send it to Grady and he can start working with it. And we're collaborating on that one document from our OneDrive. But I'm gonna remove that for now and show you another way to do that too. When you drop down the attached file, it shows you some of the recent items that you've uh, accessed, but maybe it's not in here. So what you wanna do is scroll down to where it says attach an I, uh, browse web location, sorry. And you wanna select on your OneDrive. This is gonna open up a dialog box into your OneDrive. And it's gonna say, hey, we're in your OneDrive. What file would you like to attach as a link? I'm gonna select on employee engagement plan. I'm gonna go insert. And then it's gonna ask me again, how do I wanna share this file? Do I wanna attach it as a copy or share it as a link? Again, I'm gonna select on share as link. And this is gonna give Grady permission to edit that file with me. If I wanted to change Grady's permission, I can always drop that down and I can select on the option of change permission and I can set it to anyone can edit or view, only people in the organization or only recipients can, or maybe, just maybe you wanna attach that file and you don't want him to give him a link. You can also select on attach as copy as well. And that's the more traditional old school way of doing it. 
but it's really easy once you know how to do it. You simply select on attach file, go into browse web locations and your OneDrive and select the document or the documents that you want to attach. Go insert, share the link. And then if you need to go ahead and change permissions of that link as well. Once you're done, add a subject, maybe add a body uh, into the email and go ahead and hit send. What we've gone through when we share it through the file explorer, share it through Teams and share it through Outlook, they are great, but what they often mean is that you're sharing outside of your workflow. And sometimes you don't wanna leave the program that you're in. Say for example, we're building this PowerPoint and we need to share it with somebody or pull somebody in. Instead of having to go to a different program like Teams or Outlook or our File Explorer, those things can break our flow. Across the entire Microsoft 365 stack, as long as your file is saved in OneDrive, in the top right hand corner, you have the share button here. So we can share this document and of course change the permissions as well without leaving the page that we're on. So if I select on share in the top right hand corner, by now a very similar share box, a familiar share box should pop up. Again, we can add in the people that need access to this file. We're gonna send it to Lynn. We can choose if we wanna edit, view or download and give her a message. We can see who has access to it and the links that are already available. And we could either copy the link and paste it somewhere else or we could go ahead or we could go ahead and hit send and we've just invited Lynn into this document with us she can start collaborating with us in live time and we haven't had to leave the document at all this is available in word excel powerpoint basically every program in microsoft 365 as long as you hit share that same dialog box is going to pop up and you can share it straight away and then of course you can manage the access of people so you can control who has access to what you can choose whether they can edit, view. You can also see how many links have been created. And of course, you can choose to shop, stop sharing altogether as well. One tip I will give you when you are in Microsoft 365 is that you can select on the name of that file. We can see here, new product pricing. If we drop this down, we can also rename the file, see the location of where it's saved, but there's also the button, there's also the button of view version history. If we select on view version history, this would show us everybody that edited that file when they edited and give us permission to view that edit, save it or make changes as well. Of course, again, this file hasn't been edited by anybody else, but to access version history is really easy. We drop down on the name, go version history, and we can see everybody that has edited this uh, document and what they've done to it. It's important to know that your OneDrive files, even though it looks like they're saved on your computer, they are always saved online. To access them online, you're gonna open up Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome or whichever web browser you use and head over to office.com and sign in with your account. From here, you're greeted with this page that gives you a recommendation of files that you've recently opened and then quick access with some filters here as well. You can filter by my files or recently opened. If you favorite files, you can filter by favorites. You can even choose to look at shared files this is quite cool because you can see if you're the owner or if the file was shared with you and it gives you a history of activity on the right hand side as well. If you go over to the my contents on the left hand side, this also gives you access to not just your Microsoft 365 files, but things like your loop uh, and other 365 components and team can uh, teams components as well. I'm not going to go into too much detail into the office.com version but I think it's good to know that you do have this as well because the search section here, if you're ever looking for a file and you cannot find it on your OneDrive on your computer, go to office.com and then even just from the home section, simply start searching for a file and it will search everywhere. It'll search Outlook, OneDrive, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Loop. It'll search your team sites. So this is just a great way if you can't find it in your OneDrive on your desktop, so in your file explorer, you can simply go to office.com and use the search option here. Again, I don't see people needing to use this all that much, but it is good to know that it is here. And there you go. That is an introduction on how you can get started with Microsoft OneDrive. If you like this video, let me know by giving a thumbs up. If you have got a favorite feature or a different way that you use OneDrive, let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. In the wild, where the trees sway. There's a fox riding gay